David Grisman rules. Master of the Mandolin. I'm really proud to be here today to be able to say welcome David Grisman and Chris Healy. <laughs> Yeah, I do, yeah. 
what made each of us learn to want to play the mandolin. And, uh, well, I, I don't know, I fell in love with bluegrass music and then I met a guy named Ralph Rinsler and heard him play the mandolin. And that's what made me want to play the mandolin. Um, man, I'm loud. When I, when I was, um, when I was two years old, we started going to a pizza place in California. And there was a bluegrass, a bluegrass, well, sort That's of when a, I was 17. <laughs> and, uh, it was just this, this pizza place in Carlsbad, they had a bluegrass band, or sort of a bluegrass band, they, they played a lot of different stuff, but mostly bluegrass. And that was every, every Saturday night, and, and the, the leader of the band was a mandolin player, and I just fell in love with the sound, it was sort of little, like me, and, and, uh, I, I just dug it, it was... Serious thing. I, I had to beg my parents to let me start from when I was two. They finally gave in when I was five. <laughs> as low as possible. Right without, here, too. <laughs> without buzzing. Uh, when I first got into bluegrass, you know, like it was like a, kind of a badge of whoever had the highest. Uh, action, you know, because you were trying to be as loud as possible, and higher action will give you a little more volume, but there's there's a point of diminishing returns, and, uh, you know, as soon as you try and learn uh, more difficult things to play, it just, uh, I mean, Jethro Burns, his approach was comfort over, over sound, and I always wanted to sound over that, but somewhere there's a compromise there. Yeah, I always was sort of afraid. I was sort of embarrassed to tell I love my action. And then I, I played Dave's and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. So. Uh, well, my latest one is, uh, is an album of jazz standards, actually, with Martin Taylor, the great uh, yeah. uh, Scottish uh, jazz guitar player. It's called I'm Beginning to See the Light. And then there's another one called the Bluegrass Mandolin Extravaganza. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie, it was Ronnie McCurry's idea, and uh, it, uh, he wanted to get uh, all the remaining kind of pioneers of bluegrass mandolin playing together. And it was hard narrowing it down, you know, but we figured it was a mandolin record. Eight is enough. <laughs> so uh, we got Bobby Osborne and Jesse McReynolds and uh, Buck White and Frank Wakefield yeah. and Woo! Sam Bush and Ricky Skaggs and Ronnie and myself, of course. We were the producers. We had to be there. <laughs> and it's a double CD. It's got solos, duets, trios, and a session with all eight guys. And it's all accompanied just with a, one guitar played by Del McCurry. And, if you like bluegrass mandolin playing, <laughs> yeah, that's all there is on that record. Chris, is your next record going to have a baseball theme to it? Yeah, no, we're uh, finally going to get off the baseball theme. Uh, I, I figure maybe if I get off the baseball theme, the Cubs will win a World Series. <laughs> hey, well, maybe maybe they could beat the Red Sox in the World Series. We'll compromise. I'm, I'm working on, uh, we just got done with a, a new Nickel Creek album, we just got done tracking that, and, um, and that should be out in the spring sometime on Sugar Hill, and I'm, I'm getting ready, I'm sort of putting the, the finishing touches uh, as far as compositions and stuff on, on a new uh, mandolin project that uh, should be pretty weird, but it'll be fun.
this is an instrument you want to play? Well, well, I, I play, can yeah. try. I really do mandolin. I can play mandolin. <laughs> we can go the, to go the lower end. That way we can play some of the game still. Even though right. we're actually not made. for the mandola, which corresponds to the viola, and that's down a fifth from a violin or a mandolin, and then the mando cello, which is tuned like a cello. Oh, yeah. Sounds like one of Bob's cello strings. I don't know what that one. That is the lowest sound I ever heard. Mandocello around 1963 or 4. I thought I would be the only person I knew who played Mandocello, certainly. I was for a long time. This is the second one I've ever played. Is that your Mandocello? It's his. <laughs>
Chris Real. Actually, there's a new, it's a Tone Poems Volume 3, actually, that they recorded, yeah. It's actually, uh, it's, uh, well, I'll tell you who's on it, and you probably guess what it's about. It's Mike Aldridge, Bob Brosman, and myself, playing all Dobros, Nationals, and uh, all the resophonic and slide acoustic guitars. Yeah, but, you know, it's a lot of screaming garbage cans. <laughs> National mandolins and tenor guitars and stuff like that, but yes, that's coming out uh, January, next January. I hope. David. Yes. When did you first hear of Chris and vice versa, Chris? When did you first hear of David? Well, I I, I ran into Chris, I believe, at the Gra Grass Valley uh, Bluegrass Festival. I uh, I think I just. Uh, saw this big crowd or something, you know. I, I, uh, I heard him play. He was just uh, hanging out playing, and I was hanging out watching him <laughs> play all these Sam Bush licks at the age of nine. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Yeah. Really. Remember, Great. Yeah. The, first thing, the first thing you said to me was, was did I know anything in a minor key? Oh, really? <laughs> That, I'll remember that forever. Oh. <laughs> a lot of my tunes are in minor. <laughs> well, you just, uh, you know, every major has a relative minor. Exactly. You gotta use it. It's just a yeah. bass note away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was only trying to stop to get the cross. Stephon Yeah, we could probably do that. We'll do that in the Yeah, sure, sure.
understanding of dog music is that it's uh, like a blend between bluegrass and jazz. How would you define it? And did you start that up? Well, I did define it. It's you dog did? music. That's yeah. right. look at it as like uh, all that stuff rolled into one. I try to, uh, I write tunes and I try to write them in different styles. And then because these instruments are not usually associated with a lot of these styles, it adds a, you know, I'm also trying to arrange pieces for mandolin and flute and acoustic instruments. So it comes out a certain way. Uh, but I like all kinds of music. I don't, you know, I try to get what I want out of like bluegrass uh, and do tunes written that way in a certain way and tunes that have a Latin influence I try to do them in an authentic Latin way. You seem to like invent Same dog music. Do you, do you think that you well, are... Well I write tunes. I write tunes. You know there's nothing, un there's nothing new under the sun. We, when I started my band people kept saying what do you call this you know. So I, I had this nick nickname, Dog, that Jerry Garcia gave me, so I figured I'll call it Dog. Now. And I figured that'd be the end of it. Nobody would ever, you know, they'd, they'd know what it was. <laughs> now, I've been answering that question, you know, what is dog music for 23 years now? Well, they have to ask you, you've got albums like Dog and Nova. And right. Song, you well, know, it's a good, if you write instrumentals, it's, good, it's a good way of naming instrumentals. I'm telling you, that's the hardest part, yeah. is naming them. Yeah, I used to have a list of tunes, tune in A, tune in G. Play Grateful Dog. Okay, yeah, we should do it. This is Enrique Correa. He plays guitar. for something Latin, so this is a tune, actually, I first heard Jesse McReynolds play this yeah. tune, and, uh, and, and actually Jesse, Jim and Jesse have experimented with a lot of Latin uh, rhythms in their music. Um, so this is uh, called El Cumbanchero, kind of up-tempo. One of the faster ones. Huh? It is one of yeah. the faster tunes.
Uh, in bluegrass? You aren't really bluegrass. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just listen. The, the question is, like, uh, influences, yeah. Uh, I, I just listen to everything. I, I sort of, you know, try never to put anything in a category uh, as much as possible. I mean, you know, David obviously is one of my, one of my big influences. Um, all mandolin players. Uh, I really, I really like a guy named John Reichman. He's a, a big, uh, big tone monster from the Bay Area. Now he lives in Canada. Um, my teacher, John Moore, was sort of a big, big influence on me. Uh, it just every mandolin player, you know, that's out there, it has some way, I think, to to influence everybody. I think I think everybody has a unique musical, uh, you know, stance from where they're coming, and uh, and not just mandolin players. You know, I, I, you can learn you can learn stuff from anybody. So those are my influences. <laughs> I got to, yeah, once. He was about to fall asleep. <laughs> but I, I played a little bit, yeah, but, but he was he was showing me a tune that he wrote. He was that was that was definitely an incredible experience. Kind of frightening, actually. But uh, but definitely incredible. That yeah, was the year that he died, actually. something from a uh, CD called Songs of Our Fathers, traditional Jewish music that I did with Andy Staffman a few years ago. This is a uh, beautiful melody in A minor called Shalom Aleichem, a very simple, beautiful piece. So we'll try and play that for you a little bit.
where you will be playing in the near future where people might be able to catch you and also hoping that maybe um, you can get together and do something of Christmas before yeah, we have to follow him up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm, a, I'm not exactly sure. If next weekend we're in Santa Cruz, California, but if you're on the internet, check out dognet.com and yeah. schedule there. <laughs> Yeah, D-A-W-G, of course. And, uh, Chris probably has a website, right? Yeah, uh, the band has a website, actually. It's, um, uh, what is it? It's w I think it's com slash Nickel Creek slash. So, I'm sure you'll all be going there, right, when you get home. No, it, I'm sure uh, you can search. You know, like a, yeah, we've got, we've actually got slips that have it on there at our table. But, uh, uh, n I don't. I, I would say you know never, never frustrate yourself. I think is a big uh, music is all about. That's easy for him to say. Well, I just I just say <clears throat> I mean the key is to have fun while you're doing it because I mean music is all about fun and that's you know it's it's not about. Although it is about progressing, it's not about how good can I get today, dang it. You know, it's, it's about, you know, how much fun can I have playing this instrument? And, and, and can I improve, you know? And, and, and you've got you've to go in, I think, with that mindset. And, um, and I mean, you want to be loose is another thing. I mean, I'm, I always tell people you just got to be loose. So, some very general tips, but... <laughs> On the wrist, the wrist, you have to have a loose wrist, I think. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sort of a mystery, I think. Yeah. You just, you just sort of go back and forth real fast. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make it musical. It's yeah. Not, it's not, it's not really in, in the metric. Uh, regular. Are they, then, like, talking about the bankers? Well, the makers of this died a long time ago, I presume. <laughs> this was a, this is a Gibson F5 from 1922, with the Lloyd Moore signature on it uh, inside. The Which Lloyd Moore is a very good see. signature to have on the but, inside. Uh, it adds a lot of uh, tone and <laughs> desirability. Yes. Uh, I've got a little printing press. And, <laughs> Can I talk to you about that after the morning? <laughs> uh, it's an old Gibson. <laughs> this is um, this is made by a guy named Lynn Dudenbostel from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. He just started, and he's um, I just I think they're incredible. Can you um, beat on them? Oh, that's right, you do. I do. Yes, I I do the little thing. That's, you wouldn't have to a vintage Gibson. No, okay. like for instance. If Dave gave me his mandolin, Here. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> beat on it.
that's how I know for it to No, I think we just leave it. That's a bad thing to do. Yeah. What, what happens when you start reversing pick strokes, and I know a lot of people do it because Tony is really nice, has, uh, has some very interesting pick stroke ways. But, um, and they work you know, really well for him. But, uh, but I'd say, yeah, try not to reverse if you can. I think you can accomplish anything without without messing with the pick stroke theory, which is the eighth notes, you know, if you're always down and down, no matter what kind of string crossing you have, I don't care if you're going like this, it's got to be down and down. Um, and, um, and then, you know, with, if, you're, if you're using, if you're just playing an eighth note, and you do like something like a pull-off, then you have to, ro ro you have to uh, pick up the pick stroke, just like you hadn't played a pull-off. So if you're thinking about this, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. Substitute the pull off. See how you're on an upstroke on this. So that's like a down, so you resume on an up. And a great way to practice that would be uh, taking a scale, as far as like, pull offs would be like a scale and going like starting again. Or, and then um, you can do it back up with, uh, with hammer ons Well, it depends on what effect you're going for. You know, if you're in a swing tune, then you're going to pull off all the time because it creates such a little tip motion. You know, like... Well, yeah, I mean, it's just big. Um, most of the time, you know, for those uh, the G string pull-offs are usually uh, usually just the middle, just the middle finger. But I mean, if you practice them, but uh, pull-offs to me, you know, if, if you're in like a like, accent certain things, and some of them you'd much rather not accent at all, you know, because, because in, in jazz, you know, you've got this, 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 you have these certain things that you want, you want you, there's a strong up you know? <laughs> the other notes to feel like a, an afterthought, almost. But, uh, I mean, as far as mandolin is concerned. Yeah, That's how you do that. Yeah. I don't think I've heard it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that is. I had a bit of my day and I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've sure heard the album. What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? Yeah, I don't have it. I was, well, actually, I do, but he just gave it to me. I'm real fast. I'm wearing the Russian rat. Oh, I don't know.